I've got to do all I can do yeah. to make sure that his job is profitable and comes out on target so that he's going to hire me again next time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Welcome to the Profit Dig Construction Show, where we try to educate you, the construction contractors of the world, on how to build bigger, more successful businesses. We are also creators of Profit Dig, a construction job bidding and costing solution that we would love for you guys to try out at ProfitDig.com. But anyway... This is the Property Construction Show, gentlemen. Welcome. Got Chris Work here, Jeff Givens, Jeff Spencer. I'm Jerry Work. I'm going to let these guys do most of the talking. So let's get on it. Yeah, we were actually talking about uh, job site utilization. Can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like in 2022? I like to call it time is money. Time is money? Yeah. But okay. either way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and this is a topic we've hit on before in the past. But it still seems to be relevant today. I mean, it's especially, you know, like with uh, <clears throat> newer contractors, you know, that may be a couple years old or younger. Uh, but, you know, when you're looking at a project, even from the bidding start, you know, standpoint, look at the area you're working in. Mm-hmm. How is it going to be to be able to get materials in to the job site, materials out of the job site? You know, of course, if you're out in a rural area, there's probably not much of an issue. If you're a downtown area, even here in downtown where we're at or downtown Nashville, you know, it's it's confined. I mean, it's tight, a lot of traffic, mm-hmm. small spaces. Uh, you know, you got to figure out a way to be able to utilize that site for the least amount of mobilizations, how to use that site to store your materials. And that site may not be available to store materials. So you've got to find a site or somewhere in a close proximity to where you can offload and store your materials for that site and then truck them in in small amounts to uh, to be able to, to, to complete your job. And then, you know, say you've got a, a decent sized area to work with mm-hmm. and you got dirt you got to work with. You're going to strip topsoil. You've got excess amount of dirt you may have to haul in or haul out. Uh, Find places on that site, even in a bid process, to where you plan on stockpiling your topsoil. You know, don't stockpile all your topsoil. If you're going to need X amount of yards of topsoil to put back, get rid of your overburden. Get rid of your excess topsoil. Sell it, truck it somewhere else, whatever you need to do. Don't store something that's going to be in your way. Try to keep pretty close to the amount you're going to need to finish the job. You got to have places to store your materials. You know. Find somewhere on that site that you can have a laydown area to store, you know, your, all your materials, whether it be a sub that's going to be doing utilities, you got your steel erectors, your concrete people, they've got materials that come in, they've got to be able to store their stuff, uh, have all that stuff planned out, you know, in the bidding process, and then bring it to, to real, realization in the construction process when you actually start. Be able to have a project manager in charge, let them know <clears throat> what you have planned on and how you, how you had foresight to see this job go in mm-hmm. and hopefully it will go pretty well or pretty close to what you you know had done in the bidding process now have you ever leased space from a company nearby to store your materials on not necessarily a company uh when you say company i mean it may, may be a company but maybe not my competitor or something but sure someone that has a vacant lot or vacant yeah. yard and you can find that pretty easily by talking to some local business people who owns this, you know, what are their plans, can I get a contact info, do you know how to get in touch with yeah. them, and uh, and see if that's a possible or yeah. a possibility. It might be pretty good savings depending if you can work a deal out versus right. having to mobilize everything I mean, in and out of the site. If you've got to go back, and that's another thing that's going to fix your bid, you know, wherever you store it off site, you may have to pay rent on that. Mm-hmm. And so you've got to have that added into your to your your scope of work and your bid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, as you've preached forever, and makes a lot of sense, is just the fact that you know you don't want a kink in the supply chain on the job site when you've got guys standing around 
looking for production. Yeah. You want that's, that's, that's a key as word. As guys, <laughs> guys stand around. Yeah. When, 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 when they stand around, yeah. then that's costing you money. That's, that's pure loss, right? Yeah. yeah, pure loss. Every day those guys aren't working, that's another day added on to your scope of work. Absolutely. And if you've got X amount of hours figured in your labor time, then you know, you're going the wrong way right off the bat. Yeah. But uh, and not only that, you know, is be sufficient in your work. You're going to have multiple trades in there working at one time. You know, have it strategically planned to where everyone can work in different areas without stepping on each other's toes. Yeah. To be able to get the job done in a in, in an efficient manner mm -hmm. uh, for everyone. Yeah. And and theoretically, whenever we can all be subs subcontractors here's our GC over here when one thing I'd like for people to remember when you sign that contract at that point you become that GC on this particular job mm -hmm. you have locked in you know a lot of people and a lot of GCs are bad about this sometimes is like they want to nickel and dime you and put you know put you under pressure but you know you sign a contract if you're doing everything you can do they should be able to realize hey he's working for me he's part of my team mm -hmm. But there again, as a sub, you got to remember, hey, I'm part of his team. I've got to do all I can do yeah. to make sure that his job is profitable and mm -hmm. comes out on target so that he's going to hire me again next time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. How do, how do you do that? I mean, do you go out, I guess you go out to the job site, do some visualization on. Well, yeah, I mean, and you've got people. If you're a small guy, you know, you may be the one going out on site. If you've got a superintendent or multiple superintendents and multiple crews, then you're going to tell your superintendents, you know, what you want to do and what you expect and the kind of relationship you want to build with the GC. Now, but he also needs to know, or a project manager needs to know, what your scope of work is. Now, your GC, yes, y'all have become one. He may want you to do something that's outside your scope of work. Well, they need to be clear up front, like, hey, if I do this, you know, I've got to get a change order. Yeah. You know, this is not my scope of work. I'm here to get my scope of work done. At the you most efficient. You obligated to do a favor. Right. And it's okay to do favors, you know. No, I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you're not on the hook for it. Right. right. Yeah, early on, and right. you know what your margins are. And right. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room. And if you do have a little bit of downtime, if I'm going to do favors for a GC, I want to do it in equipment and labor because i got to pay my guys regardless. Sure. Mm -hmm. I've got to have equipment out there regardless. But if when it comes to buying materials, that's automatically going to be a change order. Now, if I got some scrap materials over here that's already been bought and paid for for that job, then I don't mind utilizing some of those to do a favor. But you know, there again, it's got to be, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Uh -huh. It's like you don't don't let the GC take advantage of you and continue to ask these favors over and over and over again. Yep. Uh -huh. But they will look back and say, well, you know, this particular contractor right here, Jeff Spencer. You know, he went above and beyond. You know, he'd done this, this, and this, and never, you know, hit me up for a change order. Well, it didn't really hurt me because it was just manpower and labor. My man's out there anyway. I'm paying him. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's good stuff. And is that a situation you look for where, like, for whatever reason, you've got laborers out there that aren't being utilized and you want to minimize it as much as possible? But sure. in that case, do you go to the GC and say, it's hey, you know what, I've got two guys that for whatever reason i can't can't get them busy today no not necessarily use if my guys aren't busy i'll move them to another project gotcha but <clears throat> if the gc needs something done i'm like hey we're busy right now i can't get to it but give me a day or two then i hit a spell where i'm waiting on materials you know where it's something, inevitable. Right, something. something's going to come up where you're going to have a half a day or a day you know where your guys hasn't got a whole lot to do at that point you know i'll jump over there and do a little bit of work for him Mm -hmm. Get him out of a bind. Yeah. Save him a little bit of money. And he's like, you know, hey, he's a team player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's here to help. He's here to see his job through. You'll be rewarded. Yeah. Well, good stuff, guys. Yeah. Enjoy it as always. Jeff. Jeff. Chris. Jerry. Jerry. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris. It's the Profit Day Construction Show. Thank you all for joining us. If you wouldn't mind, just subscribe to the channel, like the video, like many videos. Leave some comments. Tell us what you want to talk about. Anybody have any closing statements? Go Vols. <laughs> Go Vols. Hey, we're still in this, baby. We'll see y'all again. Have a good one.